Welcome back to the Advanced Software Architecture course. This is part two of the Domain Modeling Lecture, and my name is Ricardo Scandariato. In this second part, we will focus on uh, the elements that are included in a domain model. A domain model can be captured using a UML class diagram. Uh, you are familiar with UML class diagrams, but uh, in this slide we will briefly recap the key uh, elements. So the concepts uh, of the key concepts of the domain model are represented as domain classes, and this is the notation in UML for classes you are familiar with. Of course, you, uh, you can have attributes within domain classes and attributes provide additional information to, to the classes. And classes can be uh, linked or via associations and associations can be of different types like a simple use association or aggregation, for instance. Also, uh, you can have uh, multiplicities at the association ends, and typically an association also has a name specifying what the association is about. And finally, uh, you have uh, uh, business rules. Uh, we referred to this before, to the time invariant business rules. Typically, these rules are a bit too complex to be captured by, for instance, uh, uh, classes and associations. And therefore, often uh, we write them out as text and we uh, represent as uh, nodes linked to, for instance, uh, the part of the diagram that the business rules uh, is constrained. For instance, in this case, the, we have a business rule on uh, uh, a specific association. As you might remember, in the part one of this series of lectures on the main model, we introduced the definition of Eva Jacobson. And there we mentioned that uh, the main model contains uh, concepts which could be objects or events in the business environment. So for instance, objects could be real world objects, so things that uh, we have to uh, keep track of. So these are all physical things in the real world, like a person or a shop, so tangible uh, things, objects in the real world. Objects could also be business objects, so th things that are immaterial but still have uh, a, um, a counterpart in the real world, like for instance, uh, an order. And events are things that occur in the business, like for instance, uh, the, a transaction like a sale or a payment and so on and so forth. For your convenience, we also have listed in this slide uh, a number of common associations that you might use when building your domain model. Uh, please have a more careful look at this list on your own. It's important to keep in mind that the domain model has a primary purpose as a communication means. In that sense, if the model grows beyond a size that is manageable for a human to grasp and understand uh, uh, at a glance, it is best to split up such a larger model into multiple models by using the concept of the view. So don't use a single model that is too big, but rather break it down and uh, use each single view as an as a independent model that represents uh, the larger uh, business context from a specific uh, uh, viewpoint, from a spe specific standpoint. And um, for instance, you might consider having uh, several of these more specific models and uh, a bigger model representing the bigger picture and gluing, uh, gluing it all together. It's very important, uh, although, to keep in mind that uh, consistency has to be maintained across the different uh, uh, object models that you have ac across the different views. Like, for instance, if you define a concept in one model and then you reuse it or refer to it in another model, you have to use the same terminologies and the same name. 
All right, this is the end of part two of the domain modeling lecture. Thank you for watching.